Welcome to a new episode of Big Bun Game Club. I'm going to talk about Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, I was really excited when they announced this game. Uh, it, the visuals and the style looked really nice. It had this cool, like, hybrid of, of this primitive society with machines and technology stuff. I wanted to see how that would balance out, so I was really excited to see what was going to be become of this game. Uh, the gameplay of it is really good. It's a nice mix of stealth and action. I think you could, if you were to compare, I think, you know, I haven't really played The Witcher, but maybe it's like that. It has this cool open world nature to it. Uh, the environments are kind of like Breath of the Wild. I know a lot of people have compared this game to that in one way or the other. Uh, but I think in terms of environments and the story that's told within the environments are similar. Like, you could see that there was once this big uh, civilization that crumbled over time because of something that's unknown to you that is kind of revealed as the story progresses. So I think that is kind of comparable. The gameplay, I think, that's, that's the one comparison I think is a little bit unfair because... Zelda is a little more of like a puzzle based game and there's all this other stuff going on with it while Horizon Zero Dawn is more practical and I think it's a little bit more creative in some ways. Uh, you know, Breath of the Wild is creative in its own way as well, it has its own little thing going on for it, but I think Horizon Zero Dawn is creative in the sense that you have these weapons that are that are unique. Like you have a trip caster, which is like to help you help you set up traps against enemies you can do that you can just be a trap based uh strategy kind of game you could also use rope casters to tie machines down you could hack machines you can do all this kind of stuff with it i think it, it's more unique in its own right than oh well see zelda does this and see it's not as creative as that they are two completely different kind of approaches to what they're kind of offering and i think horizon zero dawn offers a lot of stuff that is a little that's way more unique. The fact that you can just kind of go around these little areas full of specific machines to hunt for parts. Like, not only are you hunting for animals, you're hunting for machines to get certain parts for either ammunition, armor, what have you. And I really like that, uh, depending on how you attack each enemy, it changes their behavior. So if you attack, you focus your attack on certain tanks on a machine, be it like a fluid tank, whatever, it might change how they attack. So some a animals that might have elemental attacks like fire or ice, if you knock off some of their ammunition off of the animal, off that machine, uh, they won't do those attacks anymore. And they might just be more physical based. If you shoot their limbs, they might be paralyzed for a bit. And that really opens up to a lot of different ways that you can kind of approach each an each uh, machine. And it also helps you get certain parts if you just want th that part from that machine. So I really like that a lot of it is is more of a cause and effect kind of approach with some some animals or machines. My only issue with the map is that you you I I don't think you can get animal locations on a map. I've tried to buy all these maps from certain vendors and I don't think that you could get a map that specifies where animals are. You can find ones that have certain machines but not ones with certain animals uh, unless I haven't found that kind of map yet certain vendors in the game sell different maps that can help you either find uh, ancient artifacts or metal flowers that can help you get different color sets or whatever uh, so I do like that the vendors the vendor system is unique my only issue I've had with Horizon Zero Dawn is uh, some of the vendors don't sell everything like some vendors specialize in potions or uh you know other certain things while some focus on weapons or armor and i i feel like it's it's good but at the same time i i had a hard time finding out like if the stuff i have is better or worse than what they're selling sometimes it's hard to tell because sometimes they're both purple weapons but it's like they might be slightly different that i can't really tell there are some that have different status ailments, which I can kind of see, but overall, it's like, I don't know if this, if this weapon's for me, or whatever. 
I've been trying to do a little more experimentation with this New Game Plus run I'm doing. In the base run, I kind of stuck with whatever worked for me. And I try to go for like, oh, this is a purple color uh, weapon, so it must be good. Uh, you know, that's usually what I, I, I just kind of based on. The Rattler's been pretty good. I started using the Rattler in this New Game Plus run, but... I kind of found I kind of find myself going back to the normal like bow because that I think is a little more like damaging and I kind of have like a better feel for it. The rather is like very short burst and constant, but I just don't really think I either. I don't have a good rattler weapon. It's a purple rattler to, to tell you, but uh, uh, I just don't really feel like it does as much damage as the one I was currently having. But there's all these modifications you can kind of find in the world and all that stuff. It's not inherently bad, and I think there's a lot to explore and experiment with this game. I just I just think that there are some stuff I kind of wish the game kind of told you directly. Like, oh, can I compare what this has to what I have equipped immediately? Like, I I tried, I don't, maybe, maybe I'm being dumb, and there was a little button on the bottom of the screen I didn't see, but I didn't see, I didn't see any button. Uh, but that's not a big, big deal either way. I still had a lot of fun. The thing I liked the most about Horizon Zero Dawn was honestly going through the ruins of the old civilization. And recently on the new game plus run, I found the I found a cauldron. What a cauldron is is it's pretty much a machine factory, pretty much. But what's nice about about these cauldrons is that once you overwrite them, you get to hack different machines. So the cauldron I went to, and now I'm able to hack, I think I'm able to hack Glenhawks, I'm not too sure. But I can hack more machines more than I did before. And I really like the idea of finding these cauldrons that can help you get more machines to hack. The game gives you a good base, basic um, machines to hack. They do a good job just kind of giving you what you need. Uh, the upgrade trees are really good. I... The upgrade trees, in my opinion, in this game, I think are better than any other game I've played. I really found myself going through all of the upgrade trees and really liking all of the stuff that they offered. In most games, they kind of want you to pick a upgrade tree that you want to stick with, and it's like, hey, what do you want to like kind of focus on this tree that has this kind of uh, properties to it or whatever? Like, you know, I was playing Cyberpunk, um, you know, last month. And that's kind of what I thought with that game. It's like, you know, the upgrade tree is really cool, but, like, you know, you're really going to want to focus on some trees that you want more than others. But this game, in Horizon Zero Dawn, I found myself really sticking with, hey, I want to upgrade everything. I just want to get everything out there and just pump everything in out there. Uh, there's some that I, I valued more than others, sure, but for the most part, all of the trees were really useful. Uh, one being that... You could just whistle a mount from anywhere, and it's like, man, this that ability. I I kind of wish they gave you that a little bit earlier because a lot of the time, it's like, man, I I, I want a mount right now, and it's like you have to ha and I would have to hack one to to keep it. Now it's like I don't need to worry about them. I can just kind of go to a place, call a mount, get it, bam. Uh, so I really like that. The other thing is another thing that I kind of wish. What was a little bit easier to get was the unlimited fast travel. Uh, I don't think it's that hard to get, to be honest. You have to find a merchant that sells it and uh, find the stuff you need to get to get for it. But I kind of, I kind of wish that either should have been an upgradable thing that you could kind of get, or I don't know. I, I, I don't know why. Like I'm, I'm thinking back at it, and I don't know why I was so confused with it. Uh, I was, I remember I was like playing. I was like really frustrated. It was, like. Why do I have to go to a certain place to get it? Why do I have to do this? And it's like, dude, you just have to go to a merchant that, that sells it and then see what it needs, and then there you go. I don't know why it, it I, I I just couldn't get into that. It, it was it's it's weird in that regard. I, I just I don't know why in this game I barely spend time in the merchants. I really can't explain much about it I, you know every other game it's like okay i'm merchant all right let me see what i can upgrade all this kind of stuff but with this game it's like i don't really find myself really getting into it the other thing i i, I kind of feel like now that i think about it uh, a lot of the modifications you get for your weapons you can find through enemies or machines that you knock down camps or whatever but 
I kind of, I kind of wish that the merchants sold better upgrades to your weapons. Like maybe they should sell some modifications that are really good and all this kind of stuff. And I kind of wish they did that. Uh, maybe some merchants did, did that. I just haven't found them yet. Whatever. It is what it is. Uh, the other thing I do like is that some of the side missions are scattered through the world. Uh, the world design is really cool. Like, there are just moments... Like, I think of MGS5. A lot of people have grown in on all this shit about MGS5 for many reasons. But the one thing I did love about MGS5 was I loved walking through that world and just going through each outpost and just taking over it and all this kind of stuff. And I found myself wanting to do the same thing in Horizon Zero Dawn of just... I want to ride a mount and just go through the world and see what's there, follow the roads and explore it. And it's even the same thing with Red Dead Redemption 2 in some cases. Like, I just love the idea of just walking through and seeing what's going on. And you could see all this kind of stuff going on. You could see maybe a traveler that needs your help. Maybe you could see some uh, bandits that you could take out or some bandit outposts, corrupted zones. There's all the stuff you can do. In Horizon Zero Dawn within the world that I really liked. I think that I think what's one of the strong suits of Horizon Zero Dawn is honestly the world design. And you can kind of see that like the studio kind of helped Kojima with Death Stranding. And you can see a lot of the stuff from Horizon being improved and tweaked on in Death Stranding. That I'm thinking now I'm thinking in my mind that like the next game, the sequel to this game is gonna be pretty good I bet because I, I feel like that they're learning a lot with what they could do with the open world that Horizon Zero Dawn's sequel has to be good like it has to be like a, a more enhanced version of what they did uh, so I'm really looking forward to the sequel to this game and the gameplay of it is just it was so satisfying I'm not big on uh on bow and arrow shit i'm i've never liked that shit i was like yeah i just i just want to get kind of get a gun fuck it and this game i found myself like really loving the bow and arrow combat i love shooting the mechs like there are just stuff where sometimes i get to be going through the world to a mission i'm like you know what i want to fight that mech that thing is a big thing i want to i'm gonna fight it and i would just kind of start a combat with it i would see what, what would happen to it and as I said before, seeing how they behave, depending on what you shoot off it, it is a ton of fun to do that. Like, I really have loved a lot of this. The other thing I love is the tall necks. I love finding each tall neck, climbing up it, and, uh, you know, getting a new part of the map unlocked. I really loved doing that, seeing these tall necks walking around is... Like, it's a video game, and you're like, yeah, these are all, like, you know, made up, it's all polygons and shit, okay, you know, whatever, but the tall nets, for some reason, every time I see them, even on a new Game Plus run, it's, like, majestic seeing, and it's, like, it's an animated thing in a game, and it's, like, you know, you know, everyone goes to The Last of Us, the first game, and they talk about that giraffe scene, like, oh, wow, guys, look at the giraffes, whoa, man, the giraffes, look, look at them. And I'm like, okay, cool. But the, the fucking tall necks show up. And I'm like, dude, look at the fucking tall necks. Look at them. And it's like, that is something that I, I'm in awe in more so than the fucking giraffe. You know, fuck the giraffes. Get them out of The Last of Us. They're, they're cool and sure. Sure, wow, giraffes. In a city. Whoa. But tall necks, baby. That's, where, that's what it's really about. The tall necks are really cool looking. They're... They're like majestic fucking machines, and there's a mission, a story mission, where these fucked up bandits, whatever the fuck, tied down a fucking tall neck, they did some fucked up shit to it, and you're just like, these fuckers fucked with a tall neck. And then, and then you go away, and you're like, no, I'm gonna kill them all, fuck them, because they fucked with a tall neck. That's, that's really what I loved about seeing the tall necks, is like, the... That they had, it does like such a good job invoking like this, the sense of like, oh wow, like kind of, uh, uh, aura about them. So I really like the tall necks in that alone, just the design and the, and the animation of it. And, you know, I think last week, sadly, one of the people who designed the tall necks passed away. And that, that to me was, was heartbreaking because, 
it's really hard to really sell an animation that you're working on in video games, movies, whatever that you're animating. Is you know that is one of the hard pieces of, uh, to do when you're animating. And one of the people who designed the Tolnex and maybe even animated, I, I I think I think he designed it, but. You know, it was just such this cool design, and then seeing them go is, is really is really sad and heartbreaking. So you know, rest in peace to um. I wish I remembered his name. I think it was like, I want to say his name is Greg, but I'm I don't think it is. Uh, but it 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 is sad to see uh to see that to see someone that worked on something like that uh pass away. But uh, I really like the tall necks just walking around and, and all that kind of stuff is really really like awe-inspiring which is surprising for a video game to me uh so you know the toilets are really rad to see finding them climbing them a lot of them have these cool little like encounters or surrounded them too like there's all these kind of mechs you have to go through sometimes uh there's one where you see bandits trying to tie one down uh, that you have to sneak around and take them out, and then you can climb the uh, tall neck safely. Uh, I like a lot of that about the tall necks, is that it's, it's these, like, little side missions you can kind of find. I wish there were more, but at the same time, it's like, you know, obviously there can only be so many since, you know, it, it's a video game, etc. Uh, but I do like that you can also stumble into one without even finding one, like, you could go to an area, then all of a sudden you hear this big, like, doom, doom, doom. And then Aloy might say, oh, I'm getting another signal here. It might be a, it might be a tall neck. And then you know, like, oh, shit, there's a tall neck nearby. Uh, so I do like that a lot uh, in, in, the, in the scope of things. There's just a lot to do within the world of Horizon Zero Dawn that I really like. And it does a good job, like, diversifying the environments. And I think this is what, you know, I, I talked about Death Stranding at some point of the same thing. Like, you know, Death Stranding is a good job having different areas be different things. Like, one might be a very snowy climate, one might be a very hot climate, whatever. And I think, uh, you know, Horizon Zero Dawn is a good basis of that. Uh, you know, a good, a good uh, open world game has these cool, like, d diverse populations or locations. You know, you have one that's no, you have one that's like a city like place, or whatever. And Horizon Zero Dawn does a good job mixing and matching those kind of areas. Uh, so I really like a lot of that. The hunting has been pretty good in this game, too. Uh, the only thing is that that's a little bit frustrating is that if you need specific stuff from animals, like either like you know, might need fatty meat or a skin or bones, it could be kind of frustrating to hunt an animal over and over to not get the resource you need. I get why, but at the same time, it's like, come on. C come on, man. So it, it, it could be a little bit maddening to not get the uh, resources you need immediately, but it's not it's not the worst, you know? Uh, but the hunting is still pretty satisfying and fun. The other thing I kind of wish was that... I, I mentioned this earlier. I just wish that they kind of marked the animal habitats on the map, too. Uh, I don't know if you can find a, a, um, a merchant that sells a map for that, but I kind of wish that they just kind of give it to you. But it is what it is. Uh, the story of it, now, this is where I want to talk about the most. So if you haven't beaten Horizon Zero Dawn, I'll, I'll, I'll try to put a timestamp in, in the description to, to go to a part where I'm not doing story stuff. But I'll do my best. No promises, but, it, but I'll do my best. Uh, the story I, I thought was solid. It was a really good job with balancing a basic story that it focuses on and w weaving in a more interesting story in the background. As I said about a lot of stuff, a lot of media, movies, shows, I think one of the best things you can do if you want to do something that's a little more elaborate, focus on a basic story to be a thread. Have that be like the backbone and then have these little branches of other ideas that are kind of woven around it. That way, like, you know, you can always go back to the basic, the base story and, and all that kind of stuff. So you have, you know, you have a, a thing to kind of hold it all together. If you don't have a backbone, if you don't have a basic story, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be challenging to kind of tell a good story that way. But uh, this game focuses on a story of 
Aloy trying to find out who her mother is because she's a motherless uh, person in a tribe that worships maternal motherhood shit, you know, so, so Aloy is like, I don't have a mom, and these people are being fucking shitty to me, uh, but she, she wants to find out who her mom is, she wants to know who her parents are, Rost raises her, who's also an outcast, and he's trying to get her involved with that tribe, and all of a sudden, thinking that would be the best thing for her, as she's trying to get to uh, prove her worth to them, she becomes a uh, a Nora or an El whatever the the I think it's like a a Nora, a Nora whatever. She explores the world to find out the answers of her of her origin. Along the way, she sees all these other tribes and governments and issues uh, that she gets ent entangled with the Shadow Karja, which is this other small organization that's trying to take over the world of Horizons Joe Dawn and. You get in, enveloped in that with uh, a character named Silence and all this stuff. So all this stuff is all ent entangled with this. Uh, you you do find out her origin, and I do like that. I think that side of the story is, was much more interesting than the Shadow Card just stuff. The Shadow Card just stuff is okay. It's like okay, okay this is a cool villain. Like Hellas Helis is a is a rad villain like he's very menacing and he's very like uh evil and like bad so i do like the the villain of this game and hades which is a ai an evil ai in in the game i do like a lot of that but as i said the one part of the story that i really loved the most that i gravitated hard on was the story involving with what happened how did this this big civilization that existed crumble why are these machines around and you, and you find out what elizabeth elizabeth zobeck did and i think that part of the story was much more interesting than anything else in the game um for the most part i i because it was this cool mystery that you find out and you discover uh through each ruin you analyze and i love seeing this hidden story that was of once was and you see what was really going on why did the machines become so so aggressive and why did they turn on on humanity what you know what happened uh and you go into this whole thing about gaia this ai that was meant to restart humanity restart the planet because these machines were destroying the the biosphere and all this stuff, so I really liked that. Uh, that you you get all this backstory about how Ted Farrow, Ted Farrow, that fucking idiot. I, I'll be honest. When you play Horizon Zero Dawn, and you fucking hear what Ted has to say. You're gonna be like, this guy's a fucking idiot. Why the fuck is he here? And 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 you'll hate him as much as I hate him. Uh, Ted Farrow's a piece of shit. Fuck him. Uh. He, 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 he did all kind of dumb shit. He was like, oh, we're going to make the machines, uh, you know, instead of having to rely on, on, on a, uh, on a fuel resource, they're going to be eating like organic matter. And then it's like, well, dude, they're eating the fucking environment, dude. They're, they're eating the atmosphere. He's like, whoops. And then it's like, oh, well, oh shit, man. The, the, you can't turn them off now. So Ted fucked everything up. He fucked humanity. That's why he sucks. Uh, and Elizabeth is like, hey, the only way we could do it is if we just focus on restarting humanity. We just we just accept our demise and we just think about future generations. So that's kind of what happens. They, they embrace for that. And then uh, as you're doing this, you meet, and you meet Silence through this as well. Silence is a cool character. I do like Silence. He is he's a character that is very, like... They do a good job balancing the character in the sense that you want, you, you feel uneasy about this character. You, you feel like that this guy has ulterior motives and he's, and he's, he's doing something bad, but at the same time you do trust him and you do like him, but it's like, there's something about him that you, you just don't know, but you don't trust him. Uh... And I do like that about Silence. They do a good job kind of playing with that throughout the whole game. You don't, and they don't, I commend them by, even by the ending of the post credit scene, 
you still don't know how you feel about him. Like, a lot of games and a lot of stories, when they have a character like Silence, they love to kind of, when they do a post credit scene, they kind of unmask him. Like, oh, he's he's a bad, he's going to be the true bad guy. Here, it's like, they, they, they tease it, sure, but it's like, you don't know necessarily if his intentions are truly evil either. Like, you, you know, it's it's like, it's a little more like a, of a fodder in your brain. And you're just like, you, do, you don't know. You, you, you feel like he might be doing something bad in the, in the next game. Or that maybe he's going to be doing something else. Who knows? So I do like that uh, you don't truly know what Silence is truly trying to get out of everything other than learn. He's trying to learn a lot that he can about the machines and, and the past and all this stuff. And I do think that's interesting, but you also want, I also want to know more about him. Like, there's all these little graphs he has in his skin. Like, he has this, like, LED lights in his chin and all this stuff. And you're like, what, what's the deal with this? Like, what is silence? Uh, and the other thing that's a little bit interesting about, uh, the characters as well, like, with, with Aloy is that once you find out that she is just a test tube baby pretty much like she was a clone pretty much based off of Elizabeth Sobek that was kind of incubated and, and all this kind of stuff over time that would awaken to help Gaia in the future when she needs it whatever the fuck uh you know so you had that going on I just I, I have a theory that Silence is another character like that like a counterpart to Aloy you know like maybe Maybe someone in the past was like, oh, that was like Elizabeth's like uh, rival or some shit. And Silence is that prodigy as well. Maybe, maybe. Uh, so I do like that there's this like kind of repeating of the past with it. Uh, and it, it kind of gives, it, it's interesting to see like this understanding of what the past was and contextualizing it to what the the world is now in in that game like Aloy is like raised in this primitive world and she's like oh the Nora oh motherhood oh gods ah whatever and she goes to all these ruins and learning about what these people did and she starts to understand all of these things that are like this is technology this is stuff that was made this is stuff that is like you know that happened and it's kind of like it's kind of like you're seeing a, an understanding of, of what technology is through through the eyes of, of someone that was not raised by that. And I think that is that is much more interesting. And then it's this another frustration of all these people in that, in that world who had no understanding of, of the world before them. Because this was years and years and years and years, centuries, eons ago. Uh in comparison but all these people just assume that these these like technology stuff was all gods like you know you had you had siri or alexa or whatever the fuck and and that would be like a god to them it's like oh my god they're talk this thing is talking to me uh and it's 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 fun to see like all these people who thought of that and then aloy sees this thing is like yeah this is made by man and she gets, she, and then she goes to the world and she's like, you're worshipping a computer. <laughs> and it, it's kind of, it, it's, it's, it's funny in the sense of like, it's, it's, it's like almost seeing like, a, like your grandma go on the computer and be like, whoa, look at the computer and all this kind of stuff. But it's more like comedic in, 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 in your, in your perspective of it, of course. But it's interesting to see like. Yeah, what if there is a world where, like, you know, we get wiped out, humanity, you know, our civilization gets wiped, buildings crumble, all this understanding gets lost in time, and somehow humanity returns, and they see all these things, and it's like, they wouldn't have a context for it, because all the stuff that was supposed to be taught is gone. Like, that's the other thing that Ted fucked up. Fuck you, Ted Pharaoh. Uh, he, he wanted to remove, so, with, Ga with Gaia, Gaia was this AI that was gonna, like, kind of spearhead, like, and lead the world to go back to where it was, uh, was also supposed to teach that, you know, these future generations what civilization was, like, what was it, like, whoa, what was the history of man, all this stuff, and Ted 
deleted it. He was like, no, we don't, you know, we don't need to, to teach them our accidents. You know, this is a curse. Like, on, on one hand, okay, you know what? I get why Ted wanted to delete education, but on the other hand, it's fucking stupid if you think about it, because all he did was delete a way for man to not repeat their mistakes, and then look what happened. Man repeated their mistakes. There's war. There's religion. There's all this stuff that, that is going to lead to the same path as they did, just in a different kind of skin of paint. It's fucking stupid. Ted, you fucked up. Because... It's just gonna be the same shit. So I do like the I so I do like the philosophy of that, to be honest. I, I, I shit on Ted for doing that, but I, I, I do like the philosophy of like, hey, we fucked up. We're a fucked up civilization. Why should why should future generations learn this? This is stupid. Uh so I do like I do like the the context of that. Uh and it's just fun to see, like, the repercussions of a civilization that didn't have any context of what came before. Like, they just didn't understand. All they knew all they knew was that these were the ancient ones, or these were the, you know, whatever. But they don't know any context of what they did, how they lived, or anything. So I do, I do like the idea that they have no context of the past. They just understand that it was the past. Uh, and they have, like, very limited understanding of it they could get kind of like a cosmetic understanding or superficial of it but they don't understand like you know what led to these invent innovations and inventions that man once did and they don't and they also didn't get that these machines were created by by them too like some did some had some some theories of it but it was a, so it, like the whole world this is what i mean about the world of horizons you're dumping a very fun world to delve into it's this cool like perspective of like what we know what's you know what Aloy learns what they don't know a, a a story told within the environment and directly to you and documents that you find all this stuff and it's just it, it's a lot of fun to dissect and chew on it uh in this game so I really I, I could really honestly gush and gush and gush about it because there's a lot to like really sit down and think about it's a really cool world to kind of the kind of poke in. Uh, I also got the art book for Rise of Dawn, and that was another fun thing to read through as well. Uh, I, as I said many times, like it's a fun world to get into. So let's get back into the graphics and the game. Uh, you know that's it for the story. It's 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 solid. I'll just I'll I'll just finish it with this. It's a great story that is told to you, both you know dialogue, cutscenes, visually documents whatever uh i i was more i was more invested with the stuff with silence and uh the old world that you kind of come across and all the holograms and all this kind of stuff that you, that you see i do like a lot of that and i was i was gravitating more to that than the shadow card plot line or the sun king plot line whatever but at the end of the day it's not it's not bad. The story is still good. It's a still solid story that that is sold from start, middle to end, and it it's it it gets you invested with what's going on, and the characters are likable in, in a lot of ways. Like I I do like um, let me go. Why am I blanking on his name? He's the guy with like the handlebar mustache and and the and the uh mohawk guy uh Air Aaron. Oh my god, why did Blake on his name? He has a sister that, that they that they tried to rescue. Oh, why am I blanking on his name? I think it's Aaron, but uh I like I, I like I like him. He has this cool arc of of him kind of maturing as the game goes on and, and him like really becoming a better person. I do like a lot of that. The side characters are really strong in this game. Uh so yeah, the story is really solid and it, it kind of gets you motive, like invested with what's going on. So I I, I like the story, great story. Uh, Into the Frozen Wilds is pretty good. It's a good DLC story that kind of adds on to the uh, onto the story. It's pretty good. Uh, so let's let's move on from that. Let's get into the graphics of the game, the designs. As I said about the tall necks, as I gushed about that. The graphics are really nice. I do like that it's this nice fluid motion 
you could definitely tell a lot of time was put into the hair of Aloy. Like, that was even one of the things that they mentioned in the art book. Uh, it was very clear that they wanted you to kind of, like, be, like, whoa, like, about her hair. Like, it, it just, it, it's kind of like them flexing about how the game looks in a lot of ways. I think for a PS4 game, uh, it's really good. I know they ported the PC. Don't know how it looked on PC. I, I remember when it was first, when it first launched, it had a lot of issues. But then I think they patched them out, and, and now, now it's playable. It's all good. Uh, but... For a PS4 game, it's a really beautiful game. It is definitely like it's definitely outclassed by games that are out now on PS4 on on those standards alone. But I think for a 2017 game, this game was was gorgeous. I think it's I still think it's gorgeous. I think it, it's it's a very solid game. The only thing that I think is a little off with it is a lot of characters look like that their skin is plastic. Like, Aloy and Rost and even Aaron, if that's his name, <laughs> whoops, uh, their skin looks fine, like, it looks normal, but there's so many NPCs and merchants and all this stuff that you run into, and their skin looks like that, it, like, they're plastic, like, they, they just was like, oh, yeah, my skin fell off, so I put plastic on that, on my, on my skull. It's weird. It's really weird in, in that way, uh, Oh, uh, so I don't really, not really into into some of the stuff, and I also feel like with, even with the voice acting, like the game's dialogue and and voice acting is good, but you could definitely tell that the side characters, like you do in the side missions and all stuff, were probably done at the last minute. Like there are just some line reads that feel pretty bad it's like they got someone off the street to do some vo some voice acting so i don't really know what, what was up with that uh it's just it's really odd it's really odd like i don't i don't get i don't get why uh some of the voice acting is the way that it is uh it's just like there's one one was an internet meme video. It, it, like, you do the side missions very early in the game where you're trying to save someone from committing suicide because they're, they're schizophrenic, they're hearing voices in their head. And they're like, I'm losing my mind! Oh! Oh! And it's like, oh, 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 okay, this is this is the take you, you wanted to use. So you could definitely tell that some missions were, like, kind of added at the last minute, which is kind of a shame, but... You know, it, it, it it's it, it's not intrusive enough to be like, yeah, this game sucks. But you could definitely tell that that was the case. Like, yeah, this is probably the last thing they worked on before they before they finished. Uh, so that's that's fine. That's it is what it is. Like the the characters that matter, they they they're acting fine. The characters that matter, they're fine. The characters that don't matter, they don't matter. Uh. But yeah, some of the animations that you, when you talk to someone, it's kind of also off too. Like, some people like have, have good, like, kind of motion to it, but some kind of also feel like it's delayed reaction. Like, Aloy would be like, what's up with this? And it's like, shouldn't you say that? Shouldn't you do the head wobble, like, as you were saying that, not after? Like, some of the stuff, is, it seems a little bit off, and I don't, and that I don't know if it was the, if, you know, last minute either, but it's just... Some of the stuff is it's kind of goofy and wacky, uh, but it's kind of like endearing. So it's kind of weird that some of the animations and voice acting is a little bit jarring. But uh, you know, I I think I think that to me is just endearing and and charming. Uh, I I kind of don't would not want it to happen again in the next game. To be honest with you, I would not give it the same leeway as I did with this. But. Uh, I, I did kind of find some charm to it, unless unless the sequel does a a, a self like self awareness to it. Like, yeah, we know the first game had some goofy shit, and we're gonna make fun of that in this game. Like, if they if they had one mission that was just making fun of it, fine, I'll give it a pass. But you know, they they shouldn't they they should not do this again. Uh, it's just it's weird. It's a really really weird thing. It's a, it, I kind of feel like um. Yeah, because this was Gorilla Games, and they mostly did Killzone, which is like, I don't know. But 
this was like their first game that they did that was completely different from from a first person shooter so i think a lot of this was them learning how to do that how to do that world and how to make it expansive there is a documentary on youtube about the development the development of that game i'll link that as well in the description below uh it's a no clip video uh it's a good documentary i really liked it it was it's really interesting to see how they designed that game uh at least i think it was a no clip video i think it was I, yeah i think it was they also did a documentary on transistor as well which will be another video i guess but um I really like the world that of Horizon Zero Dawn. So, in conclusion, let's wrap this this video up. It's going on for way too long. Uh, I really like the game. It was it, it really like hit a lot of notes with me. I love sci-fi. I love that kind of stuff. So, uh, it really spoke to me uh, on, on many levels. I I loved it. It was a great great game. Uh, I would recommend it. It's it, it's been going on sale a lot. Like you, I I feel like you could even get the complete edition right now for like ten dollars. So it's like, you know, you might as well pick it up. Uh, it's it's a great game. It's it's a lot of fun. Uh, the replayability is really good. I love the uh, new game plus side of it. Like it's like oh sweet, I can play a game. I can play the game again on a harder difficulty. I love that kind of new game plus. It's always fun to do that. Uh, so I'm I'm finishing up my uh, hard run of this game, and then I'm gonna be doing an, a uh, new game plus on ultra hard someday. But I really liked uh, all this stuff. The other thing is that the loading can be pretty long. Like I honestly, honestly, I don't even remember it being this long. I feel like it's, I don't know what happened. Like I played this game through launch and. The loading didn't feel as long as it does now, but maybe it's just I haven't really remembered the loading times. I you know I took such a break from it, so uh, it's it, it's fine. Uh, I do like the game overall. I would recommend it if you have a PS4 or a PC. Uh, it's a great game. It's always fun to play it and get into it. In my opinion, uh, there's also about the story I like. Uh, oh, you know what? I forgot to mention. This is a slight spoiler, I guess, but it's small. There's this one hologram you find uh, in the main story. You you you'll you'll come in. You'll 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 find it easily. Easily. Uh, there's this hologram of these of these people who were who were raised in a cauldron. Like they were raised in in one of the the um, lab facilities you run into. Uh, you know, this, it was part of the whole thing with Gaia and all this stuff. And since they didn't really have an education, you could definitely tell that like. You see them as kids, they act like kids, okay, yippee. They are now fully grown adults in this one hologram, and they still act like kids that want to go out and see the sun and all this stuff. I, I love that. I love see like, you know, the implication of that didn't really hit. Like, I, I, you know, when I first played it, I was like, oh, wow, this is fucked up. But when I played it now, it was like, dude, this is really fucking dark. If you think about it, like these are full grown adults that act like they're five or they're six. And it's like, damn, man, like they they're like, I wanna go out, I wanna I wanna see the sun. This is stupid. You always say that. And it's like, dude, you're like like these people are like adults and they're talking like this. I really do like the the implications of what happened. I kinda I think I'd like the address that because it was all of our product product of what happened when when fucking ted uh deleted the education portion of of gaia so i do like the implication and, and, and issues that, that that raised uh because then it just kind of showed that a lot of the people you see now in the game they kind of had to kind of grow on their own and 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 get it and be mature on their own and, and, and learn what that means on their own time and you know i have no one tell you how to act whatever uh but yeah it's a great game i i really love it there's stuff that i could kind of go on and on about so if you were to ask me what would i rate rate horizon zero dawn i'd probably give it like a nice eight or a nine out of ten i can't really pick it to, you know at worst it's an eight out of ten at best it's a nine but uh, you know, I, I, I'll probably, I, I, you know what, I, I'm probably going to lay it up on an 8 out of 10. I think there's stuff that they could definitely improve on in, in 
future games, but for what it is, I, I would give it an 8 out of 10. Uh, check it out. It's a great game. P PS4 and PC, baby. Check it out. And that's it for this video of Big Bun Game Club. You know what? The next game, the next game that I'll be talking about in this video series, I'm going to announce it right now. Transistor, since we just mentioned it in this video, I'll talk about it again next time. So, that's it for this video. See ya. See ya when I see ya. Bye bye